Well, hello again. And I got no idea when or where or how you're watching this today. That's how difficult the times are that we've come to at this moment. But in a sense, maybe it's all the more important that we should think carefully about what we do, what we say, and do our best to be the best that we can be. And also to think well of ourselves. And the story today is about stories. And maybe the greatest storyteller of all was Jesus. And he told a story that you may well know about what were called talents. About a man who was going away and he left his servants in charge of all his wealth which were divided up into talents. And the one servant had five talents, the second servant had two, and the third one. And in that story, the one with five made five more by being very careful about how he invested and worked with his money. The other one that had two made two more. The one that had one buried it and did nothing with it. It's a strange story. What does it mean? Well, to try and help you to understand it, we're going to be thinking about a story today, carrying on with the story that we've been thinking about Tan and Tovin. And in this particular story, Kada, the mother of Tan, who, if you remember, struggled into that cave as the rocks were falling down the mountainside. And She's been left with Tovin in charge, guarding her as she sleeps. But she, as we find out, is a storyteller herself. Let's listen to the story. Tovin lay down at the entrance to the cave, where he could check on the sleeping Kada, but also be ready if any other animal tried to approach them. Tan had been gone for a long while now in search of food. The evening light had faded away to almost nothing. But Tovin's keen night vision could still make out the shapes of the trees and rocks around. Once more, he turned to check on Tan's mother. This time, he discovered two bright eyes gazing steadily at him. For a moment, neither wolf spoke. Tan thinks highly of you, Kada observed. Tovin gave a little snort. He wouldn't think so, the way she criticises me when I get things wrong. I know I'm nearly a year younger than she is, but she's always reminding me of that. Kada gave a low, throaty sound that sounded like a chuckle. <laughs> That's our tan, all right. She's always been very sure of herself, but don't mind what she says. It's the way she treats you that's important. She trusts you. How do you know that? Tovin asked. Mother knows her daughter. Tan left you here to guard me. Believe me, that's a compliment. Tovin was silent for a moment as he took this in. Or maybe she just didn't think I was capable of finding any food, he said eventually. Do you know any of the stories of lupus? Kada asked. Tovin shook his head. Well, did they never tell you stories in your pack when you were a cub? Tovin shook his head again. Where was this going? One of the great things about Radovar was that he insisted that the pack gathered for storytelling. There were stories of the things that we'd done that day or things from the past. But there were also stories that we'd learned from our parents who had learned it from their parents. Radovar always said that stories were important. They teach us to listen 
They help us to learn and to stay together and stay safe. <laughs> well, that worked, didn't it? Tovin interrupted, thinking of the way the pack had become scattered after the fire. Well, togetherness isn't always about being in the same place. It also means that we can think of each other when we are apart. And because of that, I'm sure that Radovar, wherever he is, is safe. And so are Cole and Levin. But why are you telling me this? Tobin asked. You remind me of one of the stories of Lupus, the great wolf storyteller of old. There was once a pack leader who had to leave his pack for a while. And because all the wolves were accustomed to letting him make all the important decisions, he was worried that they wouldn't survive while he was away. He chose three eldest offspring from the pack and he took them a little way into the forest. I have to go away, he announced. Two of the young cubs have gone missing and may be in danger. I don't know how long I'll be gone, but the three of you must look after the pack until I return. The three wolves looked at each other anxiously. Don't worry, said the pack leader. I'll give each of you a gift so that you can do what you need to do. And so to the first wolf he gave the gift of great strength and power to catch prey. To the second, he gave special eyesight to spot prey and also give early warning of any danger. And to the third, he gave the gift of tidiness as the pack moved from place to place. And with that, he left the pack. He was gone a long time, Kader continued. And during that time, the wolf who received the first gift found that he was able to hunt and provide food for the whole pack. And the wolf who received the second gift teamed up with her brother. Her extraordinary sight was useful in helping spot the food that they needed, but she found she was growing more and more tired because the pack was constantly being attacked by other hunting animals and even other wolf packs. The third wolf looked at the other two and was jealous of their gifts. He thought that the gift that he had been given was less important than the others and not the kind of work that he should be doing. What did it matter if they left traces and tracks and signs behind them? Well, gradually the pack began to weaken as they were unable to work well together. Then, unexpectedly, their leader returned. He found the pack looking hungry and tired. The first two wolves looked thin and worn out from all their efforts to, to use their skills. The leader noticed bears and other wolf packs who were stalking them and stealing the food before it could be consumed by his pack. And to the first two wolves, he said, well done. I can see that you have worked hard and put every effort into doing what I asked you to do. Then he turned to the third wolf. I've been following you for several days. I know exactly where you've been and what you've eaten or haven't eaten sometimes. I've been following you and you have done nothing. The third wolf drooped his head, said nothing. You are lazy and proud. You think your job was too unimportant for you to do. And now look at your pack. You have put their lives in danger. And the pack leader chased the third wolf out of the pack and into the wilderness. An interesting story, Tobin responded. But why are you telling it to me? Kader looked at Tobin for a moment. 
you're very sensitive to what Tan thinks. Or rather, to what you think she thinks. It's good that you do not think how good you are. But you must also value what you are good at. The third wolf was disappointed at his gift. He thought being left to tidy up meant he was less important, that he was worth less than the others in the pack. Never think that you are worth less than any other wolf. Find what you're good at and always, always do your best with it. Tan knows that and so must you. Tovin, you're very quick to sense danger before others are aware of it. That's why you are here and she is hunting. You make a good team. And just at that moment, the hairs along the back of Tovin's neck began to tingle. His ears went forward. He sat up, searching the darkness beyond the entrance to the cave. Something out there was moving around. And it didn't sound like another wolf. So what was it that was out there? Well, we'll have to wait for another time to find out. I don't think it'll be too long before I'm doing another one of these, so we'll find out then. In the meantime, remember the story. Remember that you have your bit to play. Every single person in this world has something that they are good at. Find out what it is for you and always do your best and never think you are not as good as someone else. Never think your gift isn't as good as someone else's. And if you make the best of it, like the parable of the talents that Jesus told or the story that Cada told, then it will benefit you and also lots of other people as well. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you give each one of us something special to do. Help us each to find that special thing and to do it as well as we can, to enjoy it and to give joy to others as we do it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, it'll only be a couple of weeks, I think, before I'm doing another one of these stories. So uh, until then, keep working as hard as you can in these difficult times. And remember, even though we can't be together in school, we can still feel as if we're together, just like Kada said. God bless you.